All right, into the seventh round. And outside of these rounds, you know, this is when you can start taking value picks or start taking players for depth, right? These are like some of the depth pieces, but there's also really good value here for starters, right? Especially if you skip that a position, or you skip that receiver, you skip that running back, or maybe you rent early quarterback or early tight end. And so there's going to be some value here in the seventh round. And this is kind of where you start to build your championship, right? It's finding value in these rounds. Prabhat, we're going to talk about the best and worst players for the seventh round, but who do you have as your favorite pick here in the seventh round? My favorite pick here in the seventh round is one that you got to have some, you know, you got to have some balls to draft. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are scared of this dude, and he has a looming suspension that is inevitable, but based off of the court case and when that's going to take place, there's reports that saying that suspension may take place in the year 2025 versus 2024. So my best value, and like I said, you got to have some nuts, is Rasheed Rice, bruh. And, you know, the fact that you can get somebody who last year, 105 catches, 1,200 yards, and eight touchdowns, right? They do have more pass catchers over there, more field stretchers over there now, but that's just going to open stuff up for Rasheed Rice even more. With an aging Travis Kelsey, uh, who else is going to be really working the middle like Rasheed Rice, like Rasheed Rice did last year? He was that dude who is the safety blanket for uh, Pat Mahomes, and you got to expect that to expect that to be even more secure in his second year as a wide receiver. So it's by far and away the best pick in my opinion, Rasheed Rice. Just grow some balls, man. Draft him. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Get some cojones. Get, Get, some some cojones, cojones. Get some cojones. Get some cojones. Listen, I, I like Rishi Rice, and I think receiver is an excellent pick here in the sixth round. I think Rice is in a crowded receiver room, but if you're going to bet on one, he's probably the one to bet on. So mm -hmm. I like the pick there. I'm going to go in the seventh round here, and when I start thinking of, of receivers too, I, I try to look for like who can be the guy on their team. And Terry McLaurin has been the guy on his team forever, and it feels like this is a pick we're just tired of. You know, he's starting to get up yeah. there in age. He's 29 years old. We've seen Terry McLaurin for years now. He's 28 years old, excuse me. But we've seen Terry McLaurin for years now, and it feels like this is a pick we're just not taking because we don't like the player anymore. He's not a new name. Mm -hmm. And at wide receiver 33, I can't name 33 better receivers in the league than, than Terry McLaurin if I tried. So <laughs> now when we know it's a guy, we know he's 75 catches, 1,000 yards, and five touchdowns. That's his floor. Mm -hmm. Floor for Terry McLaurin, and you don't find very many thousand yard receivers outside of the top 25 receivers. Now, what happened during this offseason? The team got a rookie quarterback in Jaden Daniels. When we know Sam Howell was maybe a volume passer, but he was as erratic as it came. Very inaccurate quarterback, and we're hoping to get a lot more out of Jaden Daniels in this Cliff Kingsbury offense, which we mm -hmm. know is an up tempo air raid offense. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the biggest, biggest, uh, biggest beneficiary of that? It's going to be Terry McLaurin as the number one receiver for this team. The downfield stuff is going to be there, the close to the line of scrimmage. And say we don't get the red zone or we don't get the, the 100 catch potential, it doesn't matter. We're going to get a whole lot more yardage out of a guy and probably a career season for Terry McLaurin, if I'm being honest. So although he's been kind of a wide receiver two or three for most of his career, if you're going to take a chance on Terry McLaurin, take it in the seventh round when he could possibly be your wide receiver four. He could possibly be a guy that you're not even having to lean on. You could just play for the upside. So Terry McLaurin, the best pick for me here in the seventh round. Mm, okay. Okay. I can rock with Terry, man. That up-tempo offense is going to be good. And really, who else do they have over there as a pass catcher? You know, they got – you got John Dotson and, and Luke McCaffrey. And you guys are not there as, a, as as that rookie tight end, but that up tempo offense, man, them rocks got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So speaking of passes going somewhere, obviously uh, the worst player. We got to talk about the worst. We, we've been yeah. hyping up these dudes all, all this time, but we got to talk yeah. about players we don't like, man. And in this range, you know, this is where you can find players who I just think that don't even need to like. Sometimes it's players that you just don't like. Sometimes yeah. it just comes down to players you don't like at this range. So who's a player that you consider the worst here in the seventh round? You know, this player is honestly not the worst. You know, I, we're talking about a bunch of people who are like dart throws here. Uh, not necessarily dart throws, but the worst value, in my opinion, 
is Zach Moss. And that's because he's perceived to be the number one uh, RB over there in Cincy. Let me break some stuff down here for you. So they run a similar type of uh, they run a similar type of style in Indy versus Cincy, where they're running the running back a lot from the shotgun. But let me tell you where that kind of blows up. Zach Moss excelled running from the shotgun in in, uh, in Indianapolis because they had Anthony Richardson there. Of course, that's going to open up a lot of holes from the running back. He was what eighteen points, twenty one points. 32 points, 14 points, uh, when Anthony Richardson was healthy. When they had uh, when, when they had the backup there, help me out with his name. Minshew, Minshew. When, Minshew, when, when, they, Minshew had, there, yeah. when they had Minshew there, a non-mobile quarterback running that same offense, you got six points. 13.9 points was the high. You got eight fantasy points, six fantasy. That, that's who he's going to be running that same style of uh, shotgun handoffs with Joe Burrow, who's the opposite of mobile. So, and not only that, you have what's probably going to be the better running back there in uh, in Brown over Chase there, Brown. In, in Chase Brown over there. So he's got competition. Listen, man, they acquired him. They're not paying him like a starter. So stop believing he's going to be a starter. You're going to draft him, and you're going to be like, week three, week four, is this guy worth dropping if there's somebody mm -hmm. else there? That's what you're going to be if you draft this dude. Damn, it kind of reminds me of like a Brian Robinson. Like if he gets hot, he's cool. But then when he's not scoring touchdowns for you, he's like 20 carries, 80 yards. I actually don't mind Zach Moss value. And I think they'll use him in the red zone. But I can see there being some uh, some definitely like question marks about his role and usage in that offense. Mm -hmm. I think the worst pick here in this round, and this is going <laughs> to. <I'm a, laughs> <laughs> Come on with it, man. Dude, Come on I got to say it, man. The worst pick in this round, and it's probably not even the worst pick. It's just because this is a round where you can get a lot of quarterbacks and tight ends. Yeah. Uh, this is essentially where I start doing that. And receivers are good here. Jalen Warren. Now, a lot of people think he has a lot of potential here in this offense under Arthur Smith. And Arthur yeah. Smith is known for using his power backs. I know mm -hmm. he'll use two backs at a time, but that's typically how he does it. He doesn't use his backs as receivers a whole lot. That's just not the nature and the style of this offense for him. Now, obviously, Pittsburgh is smash mouth football. We've mm -hmm. known this about this team. We saw in the second half of last year, Najee Harris looked like himself. So there's a lot of question marks about who the number one is on this team, if it's Najee Harris or Jalen Warren. And I think best case scenario, you get a split out of Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, and you have to take him right now going ahead of some starters. I think worst case scenario for Jalen Warren is that he takes on a little bit lesser of a role this year and is a flex worthy player at best. So why would you take that as the RB 29 when there's starters that are going after him? There's players with higher upside going after him. And really his value was on the big play. Did the same thing last year. And he was, you know, he ended up being a top 26 receiver, a top 26 running back. Excuse me. He was a top 26 running back last year, yeah. but like when it's all said and done, is that the upside you're looking for? Is that what you're trying to take here in the seventh round when really you can get a lot of talented players in this range? I think this is by far one of the worst picks you can make here in the seventh round. Assuming just, just knowing the quarterback talent that's here, the tight end talent that's here, the receivers that are still left, and the fact that there's still some starting running backs. Mm, I don't know, man. I don't agree too much with it. You hit a few normally points. I say, normally I would say Jonathan Brooks, but. I've already done it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've been a you 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 you've been on your anti Brooks train here. But uh to be honest with you, if he wins that job, if, if Jalen Warren actually wins that job, I think that his upside is there, especially especially in Pittsburgh, um, where they, they're gonna have to run because those winners ain't those winners ain't those winners ain't cute out there. So Najee is the starter. Mm -hmm. That makes me want to throw up, bro. Nazi, 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 but zero burst. But I mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, that does it for the seventh round. Let us know your guys' thoughts in the comments. It's been the best and the worst picks from every round. Make sure to follow. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.